Hi everyone. Uh, yes, my name is Juarez Barbosa Jr. I'm Brazilian, but currently I live in Dublin, Ireland. And I work for Oracle as a senior principal Java developer evangelist. And today I'm here to talk about Java app development with uh, reactive strings and uh, virtual threads. So without further ado, uh, let's get started. Uh, this is our agenda on uh, them. Uh, talk a little bit about Java App Dev with the Oracle database uh, so you can understand uh, the benefits of using, for example, things like the Oracle JDBC driver and the database itself, of course. Uh, support concerning the latest uh, Java versions, overview of Oracle DB access with Java. There are several different libraries and options for you. Uh, all of them are quite uh, powerful and interesting ones. Uh, talk a little bit about JDBC um, using a, a kind of async and uh, sync approach to data access. Uh, of course, talk, talk about the, the issues with uh, the classic platform threads, uh, perhaps as a good uh, segue to uh, Venkat's presentation this morning. Um, then explore, of course, uh, Project Loom and virtual threads in the scope of uh, JDBC. Uh, and all the related uh, JAPs, you know, the uh, proposals that we have currently, uh, including the latest one on 444 that sets the stage for releasing virtual threads in JDK 21. Uh, we have a quick demo, um, simple code, but uh, it will perhaps uh, really allow you to realize the benefits of using virtual threads when uh, doing database uh, development. Uh, then explore, as I said, um, async and sync JDBC and all the options. There's a kind of a specific library provided by Oracle called a re a RSI, Reactive Strings Ingestion, uh, that uh, allows you to use um, some specific features uh, provided by the Oracle database that uh, primarily bypass the SQL mechanisms and allow you to ingest data um, in a kind of uh, optimized approach, and that's good for uh, applications that have this, that this requirement of ingesting data from sensors like IoT applications, smart cities ones, and, 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 and so on. Um, then explore another option, uh, a library that we have uh, R2, with R2DBC, you know, the Reactive Relational Database Connectivity. Um, several database providers have that, and Oracle has a very good library as well, with a quick demo uh, with Project Reactor, but that can support many different uh, reactive-related uh, libraries. And then talk a little, a little bit about other uh, things that we can offer to developers, things like the workshops, Live Labs. By the way, we have a workshop tomorrow to explore a little bit about database development with Spring. Uh, and uh, also talk uh, about the Oracle Cloud and EA's program, OK? Which is quite interesting in case you want to become a kind of distinguished developer in the community. Oracle can support you. You know, there are several different levels. So yeah, uh, it's time to explore uh, the talk and the topics here. So uh, this is just to give you a glimpse of app dev with uh, the Oracle database. Uh, you can see all the established uh, frameworks here uh, and all the JVM-friendly uh, languages like Kotlin, Scala, Java, of course. Uh, things like uh, Spring, you know, Rx Java for reactive programming, uh, Struts, you know, there's still some kind of legacy Struts-based uh, applications are running uh, currently. Uh, but at the end of the day, with uh, JDBC and uh, another library and support that we have called UCP, the Universal Connection Pool, uh, for frameworks like uh, Spring, for example, when you, you connect to Spring, um, by default, as far as I remember, Hickory is the default connection pool, but you can also replace and use Apache DBCP. Uh, but of course, if Oracle is the target database, perhaps it makes sense for you to enable UCP because uh, the way that it operates against the database is, of course, optimized by Oracle as well. But the um, takeaway concerning this slide here is uh, when you check and you see the Oracle database as we framed it here, you can see that we call it a converged database. Why? Because regardless of your um, data, the, the data that you want to store, for example, uh, you can see here, here relational, spatial, NoSQL, graph, XML, it doesn't matter, you know. 
You don't have to run several different database engines. For example, perhaps you start a NoSQL database and create another single point of failure in your architecture, you know, because the Oracle database as a relational database management system, it can store all these uh, um, uh, data types, you know, and data formats. Uh, so that's why perhaps Oracle is a good solution. And, you know, there are many Java uh, projects running um, currently, and they use the Oracle database. So this is something that I would like to highlight and emphasize here, uh, because Oracle can support things like NoSQL, for example. So you don't have to uh, go uh, and, uh, I would say, um, as a requirement, uh, consider a different database. Uh, let's talk about the support concerning data access in JDBC and the latest uh, Java versions. For example, Java 11, uh, the current driver is compiled against and it supports natively Java 11, but it is also certified uh, for Java 17. Uh, we try to follow you know, the uh, way that the releases are happening uh, because um, this is important for us in, term, in terms of being able to implement and support uh, features, you know, and with the new release cadence for Java, you know, years ago Java was somehow uh, lagging, uh, you know, and being behind some other, um, we can say, um, languages, you know, uh, that are, for example, these are uh, functional by default, but Java now has you know, we support functional programming and virtual threads, uh, you know, uh, in comparison to coroutines, for example, that you have in Golang and so on. So Java is there with everything. And we try to provide you uh, the uh, best support we, we can concerning the JDBC driver, all the libraries that I'm going to talk about um, in a minute. And um, of course, uh, the JDBC driver, as I said. Grovium um, and uh, Interesting to say because you can use and combine the JDBC driver with GraalVM concerning things like native uh, images and compilation and execution, you know. Um, interesting to say, as you know, GraalVM, depending on how you implement that, at the end of the day, you end up uh, removing some uh, classes that are not uh, being used, you know, and somehow that can, all, of course, in terms of cybersecurity and security overall, uh, reduce the uh, surface attack of your application, and that's a good thing as well. JDBC standards, of course, we uh, support the, uh, the uh, latest versions as well. Uh, the, the implementation is there for you. Reactive strings, uh, you know, uh, all the, um, I would say, wave that we've experienced uh, concerning Java development, you know, uh, with reactive programming, you know, event processing, all those things, and uh, also, uh, messaging uh, related applications and so on. Uh, we do have support for these libraries. Uh, and that's interesting because if you have, for example, you are using, I don't know, maybe Akka or Vertex or, um, you know, Project Reactor uh, in other layers of your application, it does make sense to use that, you know, at the data access layer as well. So the support is there for you. Uh, virtual threads, as I said, the driver then com is compiled against it, you know, it, it supports virtual threads because we are seeing now every day, you know, new projects and libraries and releases uh, happening, you know, and announcements concerning support to virtual threads and um, some libraries are being written uh, to support that, but uh, the Oracle driver is already ready for you, so you can start to use uh, the driver as it is uh, today. You know, you just go to the um, um, Maven site that we have, for example, and you download the driver and that's it. And why data access is important, and I'm glad to see you here today, because at the end of the day, we know, right, uh, um, and we have, for example, um, several different initiatives like the ones by the Jakarta AE um, um, uh, organization, for example, supporting, you know, uh, 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 new implementations in terms of having uh, data access support and new uh, APIs and so on, because in case you have a problem, a bottleneck at, at the data layer, for example, that possibly can propagate and affect your uh, other components and other layers and at the end of the day, your end, the end user can um, end up also uh, perceiving some performance degradations, you know. So this is something that should 
you should never over overlook, okay? It is really important to uh, have the right strategy and approach to your data access layer as well. Um, yes, so this uh, block diagram gives you an overview of all the op options uh, that we have. Uh, from the uh, uh, right-hand side to the left one, you can see here the Oracle JDBC driver, you know, and it implements the Java SE reactive string uh, interface, the Flow API, right? Uh, and you can see our, our red uh, da uh, um, dotted and dashed uh, uh, rectangle here. Uh, comprising both the standard JDBC API, but also what we call the JDBC reactive extensions. So with a single jar, you know, the Flow API is already there for you as a first step, perhaps, uh, concerning this implementation uh, to reactive programming. Uh, so you don't have, for example, to add any additional jar jars, for example, to have that supported in your application. Uh, the second option that we have uh, is the R2DBC driver, okay, uh, Reactive Relational Database Connectivity. As I said, this project started years ago with, as an initiative, as far as I remember, uh, by a company called Pivotal, but several other um, drivers and database providers and some open source projects uh, decided to support it, so there are plenty of other opportunities and, and, and drivers there for you, but concerning the Oracle database, we do have uh, production-ready uh, driver as well. Uh, we uh, released version one of this driver uh, months ago, so this is interesting to have a look. I have a quick demo here. Uh, perhaps not the best option now concerning that we have virtual threads, which is the thing that will really revolutionize the way that we can access data again, uh, as m you can uh, remember from the title of my talk. Okay, um, and we can see at the bottom then, uh, you can still do, of course, sync and blocking JDBC calls, but now you can combine JDBC calls with virtual threads, okay? Lightweight threads, um, and that's really, really good uh, for you in terms of, um, I would say, leveraging uh, in a better way your hardware and OS resources, you know? Everything, you know, CPU, processor, um, disk, uh, memory, you know? Um, so let's talk a little bit about the options concerning this async and sync database access. Project Loom, um, that's good because, um, you know, possibly as Java developers, everyone um, uh, here, um, you know, is aware of what uh, Project Loom can offer in terms of uh, running lightweight threads, you know, in comparison to the uh, traditional classic platform threads, you know. Uh, and the use in, of the uh, logical threads, you know, supported by Java now, uh, as we can call them, carrier threads, okay? But uh, the combination, as I said, of JDBC with virtual threads now will really allow you to run uh, queries in an optimized way. I have a quick demo here. The code is, qui is quite simple, but as I said, it allows you to realize how uh, interesting that is because I run the code from my laptop here. You will see a massive difference in terms of the number of uh, OS threads that are created. Uh, so this is something that you should have a look, definitely. Um, and in comparison with um, synchronous uh, libraries, for example, the thing is that it is um, fantastic that we can uh, perhaps revert to doing uh, and, and use the same uh, Java thread link API as we know it, you know, and uh, run uh, uh, and work with libraries that uh, are uh, based on the, tra the traditional Java uh, thread model. Because, you know, for example, if you consider all the Java related tools, things like the JDK flight recorder, J console, and so on, they are all uh, built and they all consider the Java threading model as the base to allow you to debug the applications, for example. It is really uh, difficult, depending on the library that you are using, to debug a reactive-based uh, application because you delegate the call to a number of different objects, so it is not always uh, so evident or easy to really debug and understand wh which thread or which component is executing your call, okay? And that's the comparison with uh, the reactive programming, as I said. Uh, we do support that, you know, and personally, I'm not against a, a reactive programming. I think, uh, you know, there's no silver bullet in software development, of course. So you have to analyze your use case, if that's synchronous, synchronous, 
uh, and then really understand. And perhaps, as I said, your project is already using reactive uh, libraries for other layers, so perhaps that uh, is what will make sense for you to adopt and implement for the data access layer as well. Uh, in terms of availability, the driver, uh, you can combine that with Reactor, Rx, Java, R, Aka, Vertex, and so on, but uh, we'll see the, that as part of my demo, demo uh, later on. Uh, platform threads, you know, in, um, if you consider the platform threads uh, in the scope of uh, the database access, you know, the traditional way of doing it, there are several different issues. For example, the one-to-one -one allocation, you know, concerning the platform thread to the uh, thread that will execute possibly your database uh, operation, you know, a SQL, um, um, so a select, for example, or any CRUD um, operation, for example, create, read, update, and delete, right? Performance degradation, uh, you know, the use of the processor time, uh, memory allocation that uh, might affect your uh, uh, memory usage as well, and possibly depending on how massive your application is, uh, you have to really optimize um, your JVM, and even with the uh, uh, advancements concerning the Java uh, collector algorithms, for example, this is something that you have to pay attention currently, uh, but virtual threads will um, perhaps minimize, I, I can't say eliminate, but um, I would say uh, remove uh, and alleviate this burden um, uh, concerning your uh, job as a developer. Uh, so yes, virtual threads, uh, you can see the enhancement proposals here, 425, 436, and 444, okay? Um, the first one as a preview, uh, you know, second one, second preview, and now the, the, the final one, 444, you know, it is a proposal to finalize uh, virtual threads as part of uh, JDK 21. Um, that's about to be released, you know, and coming in September this year yet, so that's uh, good news for us. Um, and then, uh, of course, it will simplify the way that you can, you know, um, develop a database operations. And the nice thing, I think that's really a fantastic job by the uh, JCP and the, J, uh, the, the, the thing that worked in the scope of the uh, JAPS, for example, because the way they actually implemented virtual threads, uh, they are not altering the Java concurrency model and they are not disrupting the, the interface or the contract of the existing Java Lang thread API, or even the executors, for example, you know? Because software, it is really easy for you to uh, do something that is complex, you know? Achieve complexity in software, we can do that easily, but it, it is really difficult for you uh, to create something that uh, can, I would say, address all the requirements but keep, uh, and, and then keep that uh, simple in terms of the implementation and the way that you can deliver the desired uh, functionality and then address all the requirements. And they achieved that. Um, if you check the API for Java Lang thread, for example, you know, there are several, uh, some, um, I would say, um, uh, methods, no methods here, uh, but all the existing ones are there, so you are not disrupting or perhaps breaking contracts concerning the previous implementations. Uh, you know, you can see here, for example, methods uh, that allow you to check if a thread is a virtual one, uh, the builder uh, methods, for example, and also start a virtual thread. Same thing with the executor. Uh, so. Considering all the changes that are happening, you know, as a kind of uh, implementation behind this interface and the contract and the actual implementation, as I said, I think that uh, we should really praise the, the job that uh, the guys who um, collaborated in the scope of uh, these uh, JAPs um, uh, executed and achieved, okay? And we'll see that. Um, Okay, so we'll have a quick demo now uh, just to check and allow you, as I said, to realize how interesting uh, uh, is to actually revert to using virtual threads uh, with database uh, access uh, and DB um, uh, Java database development. Um, yes, uh, the block diagram here you can see just to allow you to perhaps uh, refresh your uh, understanding of that. We have the OS threads, you know, or the, uh, the kernel threads, uh, depending on the OS, and the, it doesn't matter. Um, and then we have the, the, the Java uh, platform threads, but in, in the scope of uh, the um, virtual threads, we can call them carrier threads, 
okay? And on top of that, we'll have the virtual threads executing. Uh, so you don't have that one-to-one uh, -one association anymore. Um, and if you want to um, compile that, for example, there are several different switches for the uh, Java compiler, you know, and the uh, Java interpreter as well that you can use. I have a Maven file here, by the way. I have a blog post about uh, th this demo here, along with uh, some code samples that you can visit later if you want to reproduce that. So let's have a look at what I have here. Um, okay. So... Um, I have the, the, the implementation here is a, is a simple one, as I said. There is uh, no tricks here uh, in terms of what we have. We just have a database uh, config file just to retrieve the usual you know, URL, username, and password, uh, you know, a hard-coded uh, query here. Um, and then I just uh, create 1,500 threads, but I'm using here uh, a classic platform thread, okay? Uh, if you check then uh, the task manager I'm using Windows here, you will see that the number of threads here, uh, 3,621 at, at the minute, okay? Uh, if I run this query here, and the query, you know, if I, if I go to the implementation method here, as I said, nothing uh, specific here. Perhaps the only thing that I'm doing differently here is that I'm using the Oracle um, connection and data source, okay? But you can see that this is just... Uh, uh, a statement, I ex execute the query, I process the result set, and that's it, okay? But at the moment, you can see 3,600, let's say, uh, threads here. Let's execute that, again, remember, with the classic platform threads, okay? And see how that performs. Okay, I can run it. Um, you will see that there's actually, possibly, soon, a spike Yes, you saw from 3,600 threads, you know, there's a spike, you know, a sharp increase, and I have now 5,127 threads running here, okay? So you can really see, uh, and that's nothing because I'm just running a simple query, and that's my laptop, but if, if you consider that in the scope of perhaps a cloud-based application, you know, receiving millions and millions of queries per second, you know, massive applications, that's quite meaningful, okay? I can possibly, because it is stable now, I can stop it here. And the second example is as simple as the first one, okay? But the difference is that I start the threads now with virtual threads, okay? Possibly that is stable now, yes, it is back to 3,600 threads. Okay, so I can just exec execute the one with virtual threads now. And that will allow you to confirm and really uh, understand and realize the benefits of that. Okay, it started to execute. There's no spike, no sharp increase in the number of the underlying uh, OS kernel threads. Okay, because we are uh, using platform threads here. So remember, if you are deploying a cloud application and you have, I don't know, 2,000, 5,000, 10,000, 100,000 concurrent users running queries, you know, that's uh, really important because uh, virtual threads will allow you to better leverage uh, your hardware resources and perhaps uh, optimize the return on investment on your uh, cloud environments, you know, so at the end of the day, you can... Uh, reduce your costs and save uh, money, you know, so that's really important for everyone. All right, so that's the first uh, code sample, a simple one, as I said. Let's go back to the uh, presentation. Um, okay, and proceed here. Uh, yes, so we talked about then um, platform threads and the association with the Oracle JDBC driver. Now you can see uh, the uh, synchronous JDBC calls, uh, as we performed here, you know, with and without virtual threads. But, of course, you can also use reactive uh, programming and reactive strings in a non-blocking way, right? Uh, blocking, you remember, uh, you, you, when you have a request or you run something against a remote server, you are expecting a response at the same time, you know? And asynchronous, it is a kind of fire-and-forget approach, you know? You send the request and you forget about it and possibly you can receive the response in a kind of um, 
callback or a handler that, that will uh, handle the result for you so you can process the results, right? Uh, so the first example here, this is a specific to the Oracle database. So I, I, I'm not saying that this is something that you should use for all the applications you have, but in case you have uh, an Oracle database as part of your solution, you should have a look at that. Why? Because this thing, the Reactive Strings Ingestion Library, uh, it uses several uh, internal um, components of the Oracle database on the database side. Uh, the most interesting one is number four here, what we call direct path insert. Okay? When you are using this one, let's say that you want to in insert a thousand uh, records, you know, um, you don't have to use the traditional standard uh, SQL mechanisms for that. Because internally, uh, the, this uh, library will use uh, the uh, components of the Oracle database to actually bypass the SQL mechanisms and insert and, and use the native format for the Oracle database to insert all the records uh, at once. Okay, so in combination with other features like Rack, Rio, application clusters, you know, and the universal connection pool, as I said, right? This is good for applications, again, as I said, things like Internet of Things. You know, you have perhaps thousands or millions of sensors, right? Or all the different streaming-related uh, um, applications that you uh, can consider and, and think of. You know, uh, that, that, that one is perhaps a good candidate. Um, as I said, again, this is specific to the Oracle database, but perhaps another tool that you should consider under your belt for your applications. Um, yes, and you can see here, uh, we have some uh, code samples as well that I can share the GitHub uh, repo with you if you want after the session today. Uh, you can combine that uh, as an example here with all the messaging, messaging related protocols. You can see IoT devices and apps, things like AMQP, gRPC, MQTT, you know, Stump, um, you name them. Okay, so I have a quick demo here now just to show you how this uh, API uh, looks like. Okay, not this one. Yep. So. I can, okay, if I can get a hold of. Okay, the first one is uh, this RSI introduction here, okay? Um, the model here is uh, just a simple uh, publish subscribe model, you know? As Java developers, possibly uh, you've used uh, Java uh, JMS, the Java message service, right? With publish subscribe, you know, uh, and uh, in topics or perhaps with queues and point-to-point -point, um, messaging, right? Uh, but we have as published subscribers here and all the reactive um, strings uh, libraries, uh, you know, the old model, if you prefer to uh, refer to the uh, traditional and classic design patterns, what we call the observer and the observable, right? This database is uh, quite simple to use, okay? You can see just a few imports here. The main component is the reactive strings ingestion component that I can um, uh, call a builder, you know, to get the object. So I just inform the traditional uh, database connectivity uh, details, you know, URL, uh, username, password, uh, the target schema. Um, and then I can just use uh, the publishers, okay, to publish uh, the records uh, to and, and have them added to the database. Um, this is the push publisher is a kind of out of the box publisher that you can get uh, from this uh, library. But for example, you can also use what we call third party publisher. That's um, uh, basically the uh, uh, use of uh, the uh, classic uh, publishers provided by the JDK, for example, simple flow, flow publishers. If you want to implement your own publisher, you know, a customized one, it is flex flexible enough to, to support that. Uh, with this one here, I can just show you, for example, I can run uh, this. Uh, I have a database table here where I, I can't see any, uh, sorry, not this one, this one. Uh, you, you can see there's just uh, six records inserted there, okay? I can just um, uh, run this, uh, the push publisher, possibly, where is it? Yeah, this one here. Um, 
and then I will insert all the um, records um, at once and immediately, okay? As I said, bypassing uh, the traditional SQL mechanisms. Um, so, yeah, if I come back here, you will see that they are all there now, okay? I have another uh, uh, sample uh, related to this one here. This is just uh, the intro, and by the way, for this one, I have, um, yeah, I have a blog, blog post that you can, uh, can perhaps uh, visit uh, to really understand, and if you want to reproduce that and see how that works, okay? Same thing with the previous example uh, concerning virtual threads, okay? Uh, the example and the code sample is there for you, okay? So you can also execute and, you know, debug and really uh, understand how you can use that with database uh, connectivity. You can see the comparison of the number of uh, OS kernel threads here as well for you. But coming back to the uh, RSI example, uh, the second one here, uh, this is the intro, uh, but I also have this um, with the autonomous transaction processing. This is a cloud-based uh, database uh, supported by Oracle. Okay, so I, you can see the Oracle cloud infrastructure here. Uh, and then I just uh, created a simple uh, database table here. Uh, if I select, you will see that actually it is zeroed here at the moment. I can just go and execute this example here. The nice thing with this one is that I combined RSI again with virtual threads, okay? So I can get best of both worlds, right? Uh, a little bit of reactivity, um, but also uh, the, the um, use of the RSI API. For this one here, I insert 150 um, records, so I can just run it uh, here and I will uh, query the database uh, later just to show you. Let's proceed here, uh, because I really want to cover uh, additional stuff here. Okay, so yes, talking about R2DBC now, as I said, reactive relational database connectivity, uh, that's supported by other database providers and drivers, but Oracle has that as well. Perhaps another library that you should consider. This one, there is no dependency on the, on the Oracle database specifically, okay, so because uh, we develop it uh, against the SPI, the service provider interface for R2DBC, uh, of course, and then just implemented the specific um, constructions that will uh, convey the functionality to work uh, with the Oracle database, right? Uh, it runs on Java 11 plus, you know, uh, it is just a single jar that you can include. Uh, and the nice thing, this one you can use it and combine with, as I said, Rx Java, Aka, Project Reactor, you know, all the uh, different reactive uh, strings, uh, libraries, uh, they are there for you as well, okay? And this one, again, uh, there's no need to actually perhaps use, as the previous one, the direct path insert method, okay, uh, as provided by the Oracle database. Uh, so all the different Oracle databases. Uh, Oracle, by the way, released uh, recently what we call the uh, developer uh, database, a 23C developer uh, release edition, which is a free database that you can download and install if you want to develop. Uh, R2DBC, you can see a comparison of uh, bo both approaches here. The first one with uh, traditional uh, JDBC, you know, uh, just a simple query. You can see here a statement or a prepared statement. You decide, right? You execute the query, you process the result set. And the second one, uh, a combination of flux you know, as provided by a project reactor with uh, the R2DBC uh, driver for the Oracle database, right? This is nice, another option that you should consider. The only thing, remember, is that somehow it, it might be uh, difficult for you to um, debug this application, okay? So I have another code sample here just to show you how easy it is to use it. Um, Yes, this R2 DBC introduction. Um, okay, so let me perhaps do this. Um, yeah, you can see here, you know, uh, both Mono or Flux from Project Reactor. Okay, uh, you can see the links here and a reference to Project Reactor 356 here, the latest release. Okay, so again, you just create a database connection um, as usual. Um, and then you can run your queries, create statement, execute, and then you can, of course, this is a, this is a fluent interface, apply all the operators, um, the reactive uh, programming operators. Um, if I execute this one here, perhaps I can do that uh, 
in debug mode just to make it evident that what I used as a statement, for example, when I proceed here, you know, if everything uh, goes well, of course, that's easy to do, but if I want to debug this thing here, you can see a, a single breakpoint for the entire call, and you can see the number of calls and operators and methods that I have here, so you understand it. It is not so easy to debug uh, reactive libraries, right? I can just execute that with Mono and then with, um, yeah, with Flux, and then I just retrieve the IDs from the same database, and you can see the results here. So, no tricks here. You should have a look anyway. Um, all right, yes, so um, as a kind of um, discussion here uh, as part of my talk, uh, virtual threads are, are reactive strings, you know, of course. As I said, Oracle database and the Oracle JDBC driver, we support both, right? Um, Remember, uh, the Oracle JDBC driver is available today for you. Oh, you don't have to wait anymore. Uh, possibly with the release in September, uh, you know, uh, we'll have a new release as well, but the functionality is already there, fully tested for you, right? As it is happening with other projects, for example, you know, uh, Halidon with Anima, for example, there's a new server there for you related to virtual threads and so on. So many interesting projects uh, that you should definitely have a look. Uh, reactive. If you want to use Reactive, we, ha we have R2DBC one, we have RSI, Reactive Strings Library, or the native, as I said, Reactive um, extensions as part of the Oracle um, JDBC driver that are aligned with the JavaFlow API, you know? Um, a comparison uh, now as a kind of uh, wrap-up, okay? Benefits of virtual threads, easier to read and write, as we discussed today, uh, easier to debug. Integration with the JDK tools. Don't overlook that or underestimate uh, this thing because uh, remember uh, the Java-based uh, tools. They are all built, uh, you know, uh, in alignment with the Java threading model. Okay, as I said, um, the Flight Recorder, J Console, and a number of other tools here uh, um, that are uh, around uh, uh, available around for you. Uh, they uh, do consider that so not so easy to debug uh, reactive applications. Uh, and the most important thing, again, and I think we should always praise uh, the uh, guys who supported and worked it, uh, hard to release uh, virtual threads and Project Loom and, you know, everything, you know, structured concurrency and so on. It does not alter the Java uh, concurrency model, you know. It is non-intrusive uh, the way that they are doing it, you know. The same API is there for you. They just augmented uh, the API with some new methods, but the underlying implementation is really... Uh, an impactful one, okay, because it changes everything and the way that you can leverage the resources, uh, it, it is undeniable. Uh, limitations of virtual threads, of course, as I said, some libraries, they still don't support virtual threads, but we can see everyday announcements and, you know, news about uh, libraries doing that or moving towards releasing uh, some um, VT uh, compliant or, you know, compatible um, implementations. Uh, but most important thing here, it is still uh, not in GA, okay, but about to be released in the scope of JDK 21. And you have uh, the links for the related chaps here. First one preview, second preview, and the proposal to finali finalize it uh, in 21. Benefits of Reactive, you know, are the availability of um, really powerful and, and perhaps useful um, re reactive uh, libraries. You know, Reactor, Rx Java, my favorite one and so on. A string-like API functionality, so you, if you are doing streaming or eventing or those things, you know, maybe at other uh, different parts of your applications, you know, or layers or components you decide, uh, maybe that's good for you, you know, as an extension to make everything, you know, end-to-end -end, uh, use a reactive approach to the data access uh, layer. Low-level concurrency is uh, handled for you, you know, but it is, uh, as a limitation, hard to debug, harder to, 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 to write, and there's a kind of steep learning curve as well. It is not so uh, straightforward to, to learn it and understand the concepts, but something that you can master anyway, right, with the, uh, <laughs> the, the, the effort that is required to do so. The references are here for you, uh, okay, for 
uh, virtual threads and project loom, an introduction, my blog post uh, from where you can get the explanation if you want to run that. The code sample is there for you, not only for the uh, VT related one, but uh, all the reactive uh, strings uh, libraries uh, with the JDBC driver are there, RSI, R2DBC. Uh, our main landing page where you can find, you know, pointers to the Maven uh, related pages for all the drivers, all the libraries, you know, documentation, uh, which is quite rich. You should have a look, definitely. Um, yes, I talked about um, the da database 23C uh, that got released recently. That's a free database that perhaps you can combine with the code samples if you want to run that um, and, and have a look, as I said. Uh, you can just go to oracle.com forward slash 23C uh, uh, free. And yes, and now I just want to talk about um, a couple of things here. First, Oracle Live Labs. Uh, th these are our uh, free workshops that are available for you. Okay, so we cover everything there, you know, Java development with Halidon, Spring Boot, you know, Java Message Service, Oracle Cloud, um, the database related uh, libraries, uh, database development, machine learning. Python, you know, everything is there for you. So go and have a look, developer.oracle.com uh, forward slash live labs. And tomorrow, again, we'll have uh, a workshop um, to explore Spring development for database access. Um, so if you are interested in that, uh, we'll be there to um, support you. And uh, last but not least, uh, Oracle ACE program. That's interesting, as I said, if you are uh, contributing and you know an active um, community member, uh, perhaps uh, that's interesting for you, because uh, Oracle has several um, different uh, ways that they can support and recognize you as a di distinguished uh, member of the developer community and the Java community, of course, Java developers included. Uh, several uh, some some tiers here, you know, the Ace Associate Pro and Director. That's nice because um, you know. It, uh, it allows, uh, I would say, a closer collaboration with Oracle, uh, support to participate in some uh, uh, interesting uh, efforts uh, related to developments uh, th for things related to Java, but all things technology that Oracle uh, is involved in, and also participation in events and so on, right? Uh, they can also invite you to participate in events, you know, as a speaker. You know, there are plenty of opportunities there for you. So. Uh, I advise you to visit and have a look as well, ace.oracle.com forward slash nominate. And nominate, of course, if you think that you have uh, perhaps uh, verifiable or strong contributions, I can uh, nominate you. Just feel free to approach me. I'm a community guy. I'm a developer evangelist, so I'm always talking with developers, and I'm totally approachable, okay? Uh, yes, and... The last one, Oracle Cloud, you know, there are some, as, uh, as usual, some cloud services that you can use. Uh, they are always free ones, okay? So if you create uh, an account, uh, you can just run uh, and, and get some services um, that you can use uh, for free um, and test and perhaps deploy some Java applications or do your POCs and pilots or perhaps you have a side project. Uh, so uh, don't forget to also visit uh, the uh, signup.cloud.oracle.com uh, link to see if that's uh, good for you. Last but not least, if you like it, my presentation, uh, this is my profile, okay, uh, my Twitter handle. I have a blog on Medium as well. So as I said, you can feel free to approach me on Twitter, LinkedIn, or, you know, or here during the event. I'm more than happy to collaborate with you. Uh, and once again, uh, it, it's an, uh, a pleasure for me to, to be here today and participate. I came uh, from, from Ireland to, <laughs> to have this, uh, I would say, great opportunity to uh, present to you something that I'm passionate about, uh, Java and also database development. Thank you very much.